Vindaloo, Vindaloo, Vindaloo. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and of course it's not the Vindaloo song. Uh, we are at Vindolanda. Welcome to Vindolanda, an ancient Roman site that was occupied for almost 350 years between AD 85 and the beginning of the 5th century. Got it? time the Romans built... Herzlich willkommen zu Vindolanda, einer römischen Siedlung mit Herz. Behind me is the incredible military bathhouse here at Vindolanda, and as is so often the case on our channel, we do sadly have a bit of a tale of loss in the last 300 years. An antiquarian report from 1702 describes this building as still having its roof. So there has been much robin in the last uh, 300 years. However, there's still a lot to see, and thanks to Eric Burley, who acquired the site in 1930. It has been excavated every year since then and continues to be excavated. And the story of this site really is about the incredible discoveries here. And it's one discovery in particular that we've come to take a look to. Due to the unusual anorexic soil, Due to the unusual anaerobic soil conditions here at Vindolanda, uh, the survival of wooden objects from the Roman period is unique in the world. And it's one particular wooden object that's come out of the ground here at Vindolanda that we've come to have a look to today. It is the mysterious Roman wooden phallus. I'm actually walking on a paved Roman road in Britain. How is about that then? Um, this road through the settlement here is flanked uh, in part by workshops and there may be a link between these workshops and the object that we've come to have a look at. It was in 1992 that uh, archaeologists discovered our object in a ditch. Uh, it was in with a whole haul of things that seemed to relate to sewing and dressmaking and dated to, I think it was the late uh, second century, I'll correct that somewhere if I've got that wrong. Because the object was found with uh, dressmaking materials, it was some time after its discovery before somebody with a bit of a muckier mind looked at it in a different way. It took a more mucky-minded archaeologist to notice the phallic proportions of the wooden object, but then it all started to seem to fit together and a different potential narrative started to emerge. We have already discussed on the Roman Gazette how the Romans venerated male genitalia. It was seen as a symbol of, obviously, of fertility, but also of good luck. Nothing to do with our mysterious wooden object, but there's a 14-seater toilet block. A temple to Jupiter. These painted ones here are replicas of the originals which are down in the museum. The interesting thing about this is there's fire damage dating to about 370 AD, possibly suggesting that the Jupiter temple was burnt down as the cult of Christianity took over. I wanted to show you these stone-built roundhouses and they're Roman built. The wall that's on top is a later 4th century re-fortification of the fort here. It's believed these roundhouses were built to house friendly British farming communities who felt threatened by the Caledoni during a period of unrest 208 to 211. Uh, the Severan expedition sorted it all out. And what I forgot to mention earlier when I was recording that bit was that the thing that makes it interesting is that there's a lot of debate about how strong or how weak Roman control in Northern Britannia actually was. So it's, uh, it's interesting to see them protecting local Britons. Right, I think it's about time we better get down to that museum and take a look to this mysterious wooden thing.
shoes. Is. There it is. Unfortunately, this is as close as we can get to it. It's behind glass. And the latest research, the latest thinking is that this is in fact a Roman sex toy. So what do you think? If it is indeed phallic, then as is typical of the Roman period, it's oversized, it's 16 centimeters long and 4.6 centimeters at the base. There are significant signs of wear on it. It's made from locally grown ash and if it is indeed a phallic object, it's the only known example of a wooden phallus in Roman Britain. What do you think then? When it was first found in 1992, they were pretty sure that it was a darning implement. Now in the latest research in the last couple of years, they're adamant it's a Roman sex toy. One of the other views is that it's a pestle and mortar. The wider base, I think, is uh, quite a compelling argument for that. The phallus brings good luck, remember. So why wouldn't you use a phallus-shaped uh, device when you're grinding up medicine? Another idea is that the wooden phallus was part of a statue outside a temple. The idea being that you touch the phallus, you touch wood for good luck. There is a problem with that though. The analysis tells us that the phallus was inside for much of its life. Apparently, according to the experts, it is a fact that the Romans used implements in their love making. So perhaps that's what it is. Perhaps this wooden phallus is a sex toy from the Roman period. The only slight problem I have with it is that uh, wouldn't there be splinters? We can't come to Vindolanda without taking a quick look at the famous Vindolanda writing tablets. A bit like uh, postcards or emails today, these uh, writing tablets are thin strips of wood with the message written on them in ink. It's great being able to see stone remains, but these writing tablets give us a unique insight into life in Roman Britain. This one says, tomorrow nice and early in the morning, come to Vindolanda so that you can join me in the counting of the census. Inventories, requests for supplies, even an invitation to a birthday party. This one's from a Petra Conspiratory Arnis. It's to the governor and it reads, Dear governor, I'm writing about the lack of public seating in the public spaces. And where there are benches, they're in the shade where it's cold. It's like you want to keep us moving. Well, things have changed since uh, Petra's day. Thankfully, all of the benches are not in the shade here. Anyhow, touch wood. You've enjoyed this video and you will like and subscribe. And join us again next week for another upload from WC21 UK Productions Limited. I reckon I could do a better job than that, don't you? I better get over there actually and see if I can recruit some subscribers because by Jove, we need them.